Catholic Christianity. Not many years ago, men used to wear hats, and it was kind of as necessary as trousers. A bare head was considered like a bare or bottomless body. Now, when you think of it, you tell yourself how stupid those people were. Isn't it more comfortable when you have nothing on your head? Of course, when sunshine is too intense, there is some reason to cover your head or when you are in extreme cold or in an industrial area. But in normal days of normal places, there doesn't seem to be a need. Now, resistance to hat has spread to the degree that in places like Dubai, that hats seem quite necessary, men abstain from covering their heads. Men covering their heads were not only in 19th century England or medieval Europe or Ottoman Empire or ancient Middle East, etc. Almost all men through all nations in the past used to do that. So be careful when you call them stupid. They include almost all generations of men before you were born. Maybe you are the one who doesn't know something or has lost some meaning. The New Age generation lost their hats almost at the same time they lost spirituality altogether. I'm not saying that you will get your spirituality back as soon as you cover your heads, but I have to tell you something in this regard. The only role of head cover is not to prevent sun or rain or other things fall on your head. The reason is your spirit runs away from your head and gets dissolved in daily life. And covering your head has a real effect in keeping it from running away. Yes, when you cover your head, you can experience more spirituality and you can be more intimate with your soul. Turban or Ammame You call it Turban, we call it Ammame. In Shia tradition, which is the second main branch of Islam, priests cover their heads by wrapping a plain fabric cloth as long as 10 feet around their heads. They don't know the reason for wrapping it and they just do it according to the tradition. When it is black, it means the guy is a descendant of Muhammad sallallahu. otherwise it must be white. Gradually, the bad thing they did was to take Ammame as part of their uniform and deprive normal people from using it, as if it is a means to spirituality that others shouldn't access. But I'm telling you, the more concentrated you want to get on your spiritual issues, a thicker fabric will help. Try it. Turbans are not only for priests. Still, a lot of nations around the world use it, especially in India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Kurdistan, and all Arabic nations, they are widespread. Sikhs in India took it as a must for every man. So thus, you can never see them away from their very thick and heavy turbans. Hindu and Buddhist lost the original picture Thus, Shiva and Buddha are sitting with their heads uncovered now, but Buddha couldn't attain nirvana in his meditations if he didn't have one. Arabs of the past had really big turbans and they used it for many different purposes. Alas, it is considered a shame to wear them now, while in the past it was a shame not to wear them. Some nations decided that long cloth turbans are a mess. They can press it and make a proper hat from them. That works too, but not as good as original turbans. Therefore, you see magnificent Kazakh hats and Ottoman fez that came to Europe and were converted to other forms to lose their meaning even more. By time, the thick, heavy hats too were dwindled and melted down to the very tiny head covers like those used by Haji 
like the tiny one used by Pope. Judaism shows an almost complete history of head cover issue, somewhere by huge Hasidic hats, which are almost as big as the original black amame of Moses, and the others are reduced to a very small thing that very slightly covers the central circle of head, only to prove that they have lost their way, just as the priests of the Christianity. Phallic men of the past. You can imagine a man's spirit like something that evaporates and goes upwards. Even the bodies of the lost men of present times produces just a little bit of spirituality every day, but it runs away like a perfume which doesn't have a cap. If you had ghost vision glasses, maybe you could see this with your own eyes. Then. You may rush to cover your head and stop it from running away. No matter if the weather is good or bad, you are living in North America or Africa. Is it shiny or cloudy? It has nothing to do with outside. It is something about inside. And this is what contemporary spirituality stripped away people don't understand. Basically, this invisible taboo about head cover is sort of the same thing Shia clerics have created in this part of the world. It is a means of spirituality that you shouldn't access it. Therefore, it must be considered a shame if you use it in your country. While it is too easy and you can make it with a very simple six feet linen, and you can immediately feel what I mean. Some used to use a mame and hat in combination. It means a conical hat will be in the middle and a turban is wrapped around it. When you look at the tomb of Molana Jalaluddin Rumi in Turkey, you see a lot of long conical hats with turbans around them. Actually, in any old tomb in Istanbul, you can see the same style used by them in the past. They even put the same on the grave of the man who has died as a sign of his belief and his spirit. When you look at them, you find out that the turban is only there to prevent the long cylinder from falling down. The turban simply helps them to keep it straight upward over their heads. What do they look like? Bingo, you already guessed it. They are penis. And this is their allegiance if they have not lost their origin. The more you dig into the or e gene, you get closer to the penis. Even the very long English hats of 19th century was put on men's head to make them look like penis. Every man this way becomes a penis bearer, a flag bearer of Hazrat. We will discuss later that the scorpion is the flag bearer of penis because its tail, especially in Androctonus species, looks like a penis. In order to cry out to the world that you worship his majesty demon, you don't need to shout out from top of a minaret by loudspeakers with your awkward voice just they do like they do in Turkey and other Islamic countries right now. You worship penis and you want to tell the world that spirituality is intertwined with penis, you just try to look like him and become his flag. That's what Rumi and other grand masters used to do, but you have lost their heritage. Graveyard Penis In Iran, there was an old graveyard called Khaled Nabi or Khold Nabi that Basijis destroyed it a few years ago. Basijis are the name given to the fanatics of the Iranian Islamic Republic. Anyways, Almost all tombs in this graveyard had a stone penis on them over four to five feet tall. The most interesting thing is the graveyard is not ancient. 
It remains from the time of Buye and Ziyari dynasties, who were the first forms of Shiaism in Iran. It means Shia worshipped penis. This is the hat that they are putting on their tombs. But passages destroyed them to prove there was no such thing. And now you won't believe how intensely they are praying for Hazrat Mahdi, the moon demon, to come faster for the great encounter of Armageddon. I don't know what they will do if Hazrat Mahdi asked them to wear turbans and hats in order to look like penis themselves. Of course, the easiest way for them is to call Hazrat a false messiah and kill him and wait for the next one who confirms their own ideas. This is what they have been doing for the last thousand years. Oof. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Oh Lord, please put sal on Muhammad and his all. What I just said is called salawat. And every Muslim says it to earn heavenly rewards. But of course, they either understand nothing from what their mouths are saying, or if they are a cleric or something, they deduct a completely different meaning to connect it to Allah, the death. Look at me too. من ادبا آخ علم دن قبر وندن من ادبا آخ قیامت وحشت اندن من ادبا آخ We listen to this kind of nohe and we cry unconsciously if this religion penetrates in your hearts the same will happen to you and this is kind of magic meaning your heart chakra is opened Nohe is the name of this kind of lamentation songs we sing only for the religious ceremonies. Thousands of them are available. Their subject is circulating mostly on Hazrat Hussein, who was beheaded in Karbala. He is the fifth person of all of Muhammad. I have told you many times about him in our previous programs. I don't know which one. Please go find it yourselves. No, I'm going to translate a few words of it for you. It is in Azari Turkish language and the singer is Haj Mehdi Rasuli from Zanjan city of Iran. It means look at me too. He is talking to Hazrat Hussein Sal, and he is demanding Hazrat to look at him too, and the audience should repeat, "Look at me too." When ölümden qabrevinden manada bağ, when I am dead, when I am in my house of tomb, please look at me. Qiyamat vahşetinden manada bağ. In the horrible day of resurrection, look at me too. You have to watch our program, Jesus Christ against God. At the day of resurrection, the monotheistic God wants to take everyone to the court and from there pour them into the fire of hell. We are all sure that the God of death, God of Christianity and Islam has no mercy and he will do that. Jesus Christ is the fifth person of the al Imran, meaning the house of Zakaria. Hussein is the fifth person of the al Muhammad. These alls are just reincarnations of the one and same persons. Therefore, Jesus Christ and Hussein are one and the same. We believe Christ or Hussein is the one who releases us from the God of death. This is the agreement. Even one glance from him is enough for you to be relieved or get salvation after you are dead and death is pulling you into eternal damnation. Whoever Hussein or Jesus sets his glance on him or her will get redemption. Others are doomed and lost in hellfire for eternity. Therefore, 
<coughs> you have to beg and cry for him as much as you can and tell him look at me too the number five who saves let's go back to our graveyard to my tomb to your tomb to hold the nabi you think the guy dies, he is a decent and worthy man, people around him revere him so much. He demands this big phallus to be put on his tomb. Survivors of the deceased one pay a lot of money to the sculptor to build a perfect stone penis and they put it nowhere but exactly on his tomb. Why is that? I give you several moments to think and I repeat my question. Why a gentleman, a dignity, demands that after his death nothing but a huge penis to be carved and put on his tomb? Okay, I give you some clue. He expects that Hazrat number five, who is Jesus or Hussein, come and help him when he is utterly helpless and trapped in his tomb. No one but this number five can help him, absolutely no one. Then why on earth he puts nothing but a huge penis on his own tomb? Listen carefully. Here is the answer. His Highness, the number five himself, is penis. He is penis. Every god or demon has a planetary symbol, as well as a botanical symbol, as well as a number symbol, as well as, as, well as a letter symbol, as well as an animal symbol as well as a body part symbol. The body part symbol for character number five who breaks the God apart is penis. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. You call it penis? In Persian we call it kir. Persian Magi use a lot of Turkish jargon. When you talk about a belief or ideology, you call it ism. The one goes after something ism, you call him something ist. But we had to talk about these issues thousands of years before modern scholars appeared. At that time, we used the Turkish suffix istian, meaning the one who wants, the one who follows, the one who worships. Kiristian is the one who wants, worships, and follows His Highness Penis. It is a Persian-Turkic combination. Latin priests wrote it with CH instead of K in the hope to make sure the root will be lost, but they couldn't change the pronunciation for Christian. His Highness himself is called Christ and his followers Christian. The penis and those who desire follow and worship penis. He himself cannot be called simply Kir because demon names are always added with a female part. Here Ist or Ishtar is the female part. So the character number five himself is called Kirist. English, like always, corrupts the pronunciation and says Christ. And his worshippers, Christians, meaning Kiristians, penis worshippers. Satan or Istian? What? Istian is the second part of the word Christian. Have you ever noticed how close is this word to the name of my father, His Majesty, Magi, Demon, Hazrat, Satan, Istian, and Satan? And look at the meaning. The cult of death has done its best to stop you from following your desires. But Satan is basically introduced as the essence of desire. He follows his own desires, that's why Bible hates him. Wantonness and desire are the root of being Satan. 
and how strange that the Turkish word istiyan means the one who desires, the one who wants. Latin language has, done, has just removed the initial E and changed Istian to Satan. Once again, it is returned to Arabic and become Shaitan. Oh dear Satan, you are just that desire, the desire of mankind that has been rebuked for the whole length of the history. And let me tell you more. In the root of Istian, Ishtar is present. East is for Ishtar. Even the Turkish word Isti, meaning warmth, comes from her. Who is her father? It is Anu or An, the same guy who gives her the bull of heaven in the epic of Gilgamesh. Again, demon name should be in the form of XY, meaning one part of the main name should be female. Thus, Istan or Istian is the name of Satan that has Ishtar as the first part and Anu as the second. No wonder that the biggest city of Turkey is Istanbul. That's most original and essential Turkish. Back to the name Christian. The first part, Kir, means penis, and the second part is Satan. Ladies and gentlemen, our Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, is rightfully the penis of Satan. That's why we worship him. Satan is the stranger who impregnated God Sophia, in, aka Maria. In the myth of Osiris, Seth tears him to 14 parts. Isis finds 13 of them, only his penis is missing. Then she makes a magical penis, she calls this magical penis Horus. Therefore, Horus is the penis of Osiris, just as our Lord Jesus Christ is the penis of Satan. May Hazrat Vajjad put her cell upon them both. Istan or Ism? We are against racism and we are against nationalism. Actually, nationalism is even worse and more illogical compared to racism. Racism says I am better because I have this blood, which is quite stupid. But nationalism says I am better because I live or my father has lived in this geography. As you see, the second guy is even more empty-minded than the first. But unfortunately, governments are supporting nationalism to reinforce their own imaginary borders. On the other hand, we believe ideology is important. If you are her servants, this is important. It is important if you are lost or you are not. It is important if you believe on the same thing, no matter what race or geography they have pushed us into. Some country names are now considered geographical, but basically it has not been about geography, it is about religion. They think India, or more properly Hindustan, comes from Hindu plus Istan, because Istan is Persian meaning place of, so it's a place of Hindus. But as we said, Istan is Turkish for Istian, so it is not a geographic but religious name. That means they want and worship Hindu. Hin or Jin is a daughter and Du or Tu is demon. Hind from its origin of Sind indicates to Jin devil or Devi. I had to mention this because these Eastern suffixes are just like Eastern suffix of Christianity, but some like Hindustan and Pakistan have become geography, while others like Christianity have lost its meaning altogether, while all of them indicate to the same ideology of Satan, meaning desire. 
By the way, Pak of Pakistan, that they refer to cleanness, in fact refers to Paga, the female cow, the same thing that they slaughtered to prove they are against Indians. Thus, Pakistan is synonymous to pagan. In the end, I wish all Christians come back to themselves. Christians, come back. You are badly lost in this horrible desert and your priests have been blind for many centuries. Come back to him, come back to Christ and his father and be careful to pray to him properly. Otherwise, he will not look at you when you are helplessly lying in your tombs or being burned by death at the day of resurrection. Cover your heads with a turban and put stone penises on your tombs. Ask His Highness every night with your eyes full of tears to save you and have His glance on you. And don't forget to ask Hazrat Bajjad to put her cell on the head of Satan and his clan. Thank you. Hey, did 